afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Today on the program, we're going to learn about a farming practice called tile drainage. Tile drainage was used by the Greeks more than 2,000 years ago. It was first introduced in this country in the 1830s. The practice got its name from the clay tiles that were used to help drain farm fields. While tiles are no longer used, the term tile drainage is still around. To learn more, we've called on two guests this afternoon. Marley Roop is an agricultural water quality specialist with Vermont's Department of Environmental Conservation, and Laura DiPietro is the Deputy Director of Agricultural Resource Management at Vermont's Agency of Agriculture, Foods, and Markets. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Now, Laura, maybe you can start out by telling folks what is tile draining? Sure. Tile drainage is a practice where you put tiles in the ground and it really is meant to lower the groundwater table. Mm -hmm. And effectively what that does is allow more space for air in the soil profile for the crops to grow and not be saturated. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a practice that would be used in maybe a farm field that's particularly soggy in one part mm -hmm. to use more of the land. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's either been used, um, there's two different ways it's been used in Vermont, either just in a low spot or mm -hmm. a wet spot, or it's been systematically put throughout the field. And so I think we have some, some pictures that kind of illustrate that to give people sure. an idea. Sure, so this picture here shows you how the water table itself, the blue, is lowered where the tile is located. And you'll see that there's an area where the water table isn't always lowered, so it sort of has that mm -hmm. throughout the field um, elevation change there. And what it does is you can see in the, the photo on the left there, the drain conditions, the roots are really shallow and the plant doesn't do as good to where in the drain condition, the roots can grow much deeper. The plant can take up a lot more nutrients and grow effectively a better crop for mm -hmm. the farm. And so I've heard the tile drainage has been described as sort of the opposite of irrigation. Is that true? It can be called that. Sometimes it's called reverse irrigation. But the idea is to get this um, water off of the field so the crops do grow better, as Laura said. Okay, and so these are constructed systems. Someone has to design and install them. Is that correct? How does that work? Yeah. Yeah, so um, most of, there's about four or five tile drain installers that we're aware of in the state that work in the state. They're not all in Vermont. And they design systems. They are, you know, it's all elevation with um, leveling equipment. It's really important, obviously, to get the drainage to flow from one end to the other. And when you're going long, long distances, you know, real small dis um, separation of space makes a real big difference. Mm -hmm. And so these are, um, what are some of the specific benefits to the tile drainage? Well, certainly for the farmers, it's the increased crop production. When you have the lower water table, the roots grow better, the plants grow better. The production off of that field is pretty essential to get the higher production for that, uh, usually the corn crops. And to the farmers, that's a major economic benefit. Mm -hmm. And what does it do to the soil, though? Is that the question? <laughs> well, there's a lot of benefits for the soil, and this is where, you know, I think farmers are somewhat torn of the recommendations that have been provided to them, either from the government or extension over the many years, is that it, it lessens compaction, because if you have a wet soil and you drive a equipment over it, you're going to compact it. Um, and by doing this draining, it allows them to have less compaction, allows them to get out during some of these seasons to do some of these innovative croppings, like cover crop, um, to where in, in previous years they may have been more challenged to do that if it, the field wasn't tile drained and was still remaining wet. Mm -hmm. And so um, is tile drainage widely used in Vermont? Well, that's kind of an unknown. We know where there are certain areas where it's extensively used, especially in Franklin and Addison counties. But we really don't know exactly where. There isn't any kind of mapping that's going on or tracking of it. So that's one of the challenges. The census from a few years ago indicated um, that there was a pretty small amount, maybe 4% of the land was tiled. But um, we really suspect that's inaccurate and really don't have a method for checking it. But we do know that it's a practice that farmers are using quite a bit now, and more and more we can see it go in. Mm -hmm. And, and um, are there water quality issues associated with tile drainage? Is that one of the issues? It's definitely potentially one of the issues and one of the challenges that we deal with with tile drains. We know that there's the potential for nutrients to be coming out of these tiles. There's been extensive sampling and a fair amount of research on this. So we are very concerned about this. The challenge, though, is we don't know exactly when that potential is going to occur and whether there is a consistent load coming out of the tile or whether it's just a one-time deal where there's a slug of water that has a particular um, high level of nutrients in it. What we do know is that there's a lot that can be done to control the amount of nutrients that are coming out. And I think that's what's especially important to both of our agencies is that we focus on the management above the tiles because nothing's going to come out of the tile if the nutrients are managed appropriately at the other end mm -hmm. or certainly less. And so what does science say about the drainage? Has there been a lot of scientific work on this in Vermont? Uh, in Vermont, less than more in the country. 
Um, we are working with mostly the Basin Program, Lake Champlain Basin Program, to do some research projects in Vermont uh, to look at basically you know, where, where are tiles and like Marley described, when does it happen? Um, nationally, the literature suggests that potentially macropores or those root zones or earthworm holes provide direct connections to the tiles so that as water goes through, it can move faster through those, um, which after like a nutrient application, it could, if a rain event coincided, it could move that down subsurface. Um, what we don't know about a lot of the research and what has been somewhat conflicting is the surface runoff was going to happen anyways in that rain event, right. and which is more problematic, the tile or the surface runoff. And that's where, you know, it depends on the size of the event, it depends on the source of the nutrients, it depends on the system above that tile and how healthy that system is. And, and that's where it's hard to take one research project and apply it broadly. Also too, I would imagine every farm is different. Every farm is different, and that's one of the challenges of how we manage this. Um, there are a lot of different treatments, as Laura said. There are the management issues at the uh, at one end, and then the potential treatments at the end of the tile. And every farmer manages their nutrients differently. Every soil is different. Certainly, the weather impacts it enormously also. And so, what does it cost to put in one of these systems? Is it expensive? I mean, it would, I would think it would be a significant investment for the farmer. It's a very significant investment for the farmer. It does have a fairly good turnaround time. I think it's like five years, five to seven years is mm -hmm. typical turnaround time on um, the benefits outweighing the cost. Um, so that's where you'll see, like Marley said, you're seeing some tile going in. A lot of it, the clay tile that you introduced the show with, um, is in Vermont, and especially in that Lake Champlain Basin, the valley there where the heavier soils were, and so they're replacing them because it is worthwhile as far as crop productivity and just, you know, soil health as well, like I mentioned, the compaction. So what research is underway? There is a lot of research going on, and um, we're really looking forward to some of the results of that to help us make the decisions moving forward on this. Stone Environmental is conducting some research in the Jewett Brook area of Franklin County, mm -hmm. looking at monitoring tiles and evaluating um, both the load that comes out and the concentration. There's the difference between the two, the overall amount of the nutrients as well as the slug that comes out. There's research going over at Minor Institute too, which is very valuable to us, looking at different types of BMPs, best management practices, way to manage the nutrients on the fields ahead of time, but also looking at control structures, some management technique at the end of the tiles where you can actually shut off the water flow that's coming out of the tile at certain times of year or um, around the rain events. There's also going to be more research going on within the state, with this state itself with more sampling and um, UVM extension also has been doing some research on the phosphorus index, which is a calculation in nutrient management plans that farmers have that will now include tile drain management in it also. And I think that's going to have a, a valuable impact too in how farmers are able to manage the nutrients that are going into the tiles and into the fields. Right, because they want the nutrients to stay in the field. Absolutely. Nobody mm -hmm. wants it to be running off into the pipes. The farmers don't. It's a waste of the nutrients, and certainly none of us do from an environmental water quality point of view. Mm -hmm. Well, over the past couple of years, as scientific review and research has been underway, a tile drain advisory group has been put together, and you're both part of that group. Tell me a little bit about what some of the work is that you're doing. Sure. So the Tile Drain Advisory Group is a series of farmers, um, scientists that are, have been researching this type of agricultural pollution management, uh, researchers, so UVM, agronomists, and environmental organizations, the state government and federal government that are involved in either research or developing information and policy around all of this. So this group got together to basically look at what should we do, right? We have conflicting data out there. We know that we have a pollution issue in Lake Champlain especially, um, and we know we have tile drainage in Lake Champlain, and how should we manage it? And so we discussed that. We generated a report that was written um, from the Tile Drain Advisory Group where they did look at prioritizing and understanding all the issues. So it was a really good chance to educate a wide variety of folks and to get quality input into what their perspectives were, knowing all the information that was available as far as the recommendations that they would give to us, which then the state had to create a report for the legislature. Mm -hmm. So the Agency of Natural Resources and the Agency of Agriculture have released joint recommendations regarding tile drainage. What's included in those recommendations? Well, as Laura said, we took a lot of input from the Tile Drain Advisory Group, but also from an extensive literature review that was done um, by the Lake Champlain Basin Program in the year prior to the advisory group. They really looked at all of the research that's been going on with regards to tile drain over the last few years, not just locally, but also around the entire country and, and other parts of the world. 
And the recommendations that we came up with were mainly, again, as we said before, looking at how we manage the nutrients above the tiles. Education of farmers was certainly one of the priorities for us. As um, most of your viewers probably know, the Agency of Agriculture recently updated their regulations, the required agricultural practices. And those new regulations have a lot of factors in them that can also impact the effectiveness of tile drains and the control of the potential for nutrients coming out of them. So the education and the implementation of the RAPs is certainly key. We obviously want to see more research going on, and funding is critical to that, so that's a, a major priority for us. Another recommendation was to start to get a handle on what the extent of tile is, so we'll know where it is and how much of an impact it is actually having on water quality. Because both agencies feel really strongly that when we do make any final recommendations or future recommendations with regards to tile or the management of them, that they be based on science. This right. is something that's going to be impacting the producers, obviously, in their economics, um, but it also has the potential to impact water quality and it's critical to both of us that we have the most current science and the best science to be able to make the decisions on this. So we know based on science, based on literature review, that management of the manure, management of the amount of phosphorus that's in the soil are both especially critical to what's coming out of tile drains. So that's, that's certainly our focus area right now. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we can learn from other states maybe who have more extensive tile drainage systems? We definitely already have. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the literature mm -hmm. review, the work with the advisory group, that all mostly focused on other research. Um, you know, there's research also up in Quebec that we've worked and looked through. Mm -hmm. And Minor Institute, as you mentioned, was a, a, you know, they're really a key player in the similar soils at some level that we have here in, in cl climatic region. Um, but yes, absolutely. But there's also, you know, this, you need to see it and make it work here in Vermont for people to believe that it is effective in Vermont. Right. Um, so mm -hmm. what, what we need to do in two ways also is just trying to find solutions in the field and making those solutions in the field engineering wise is, is really challenging and we've done enough research in Vermont to learn something about that. Um, if you think about it, it's at the lowest end of the water table so right. you don't want to treat incoming water. You want to treat outgoing water or else you'll waste your media um, really quick. You'll burn it out. And so trying to figure out how to engineer these things where certain engineering designs are appropriate to where in other places it may be a totally different design that we need to come up with. So that's sort of our next realm as far as the implementation in the ground is to really find something that works here in Vermont. Most of the stuff nationally is research oriented, not real field practical. Um, however, there is, on nitrogen, there is more uh, practical implementation for nitrogen, but it won't treat phosphorus, what they're putting in. So mm -hmm. trying to figure out the sweet spot between research and real implementation is where we are. And so where do farmers fall into this whole scenario? Well, certainly, as we've mentioned, the management of the nutrients is critical. That's why nutrient management plans, making sure they understand them and use them and implement them accurately is, is probably one of the most important tools and parts that the, the roles that the farmers play. I think having them part of our ongoing discussions in this, both with the tile advisory group and with the ongoing groups that, that the Agency of Agriculture has been pulling together as they work on the RAPs, the required agricultural practices, having farmers included in that is really critical. We need to understand the challenges that they face as we also make sure that they understand the role that they play and the opportunities that they have for managing this. So what happens next? Mm. Well, we're continuing to work. We're going to um, UVM Extension and the Farmers Watershed Alliance have been working on with farmers to pull samples from their own tiles and monitor them. And we're hoping to expand that. That was one of the recommendations out of the advisory group is that we do the synoptic sampling, which will help the state understand areas of where tiles are and how dense they are with survey information about the type of tile system it is. Um, and it would all be kept aggregated so that we could understand and share with the public what we know about tiles and the, the variation in the sampling and the timing of um, when a rain event might have happened and when a nutrient application might have happened. So trying to understand that more broadly through a sampling throughout the state is this year. Um, we intend to meet back with the advisory group and talk about that data at the end of the, se the, you know, the whole field season and work with the basin program to make the next recommendation for what we need to do next as a research step. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we are continuing to work on is as far as the regulatory agency for nutrient management plans um, to ensure that farmers understand the value, like Marley said, of these plans and the importance of following them. So this whole summer, you know, we'll be doing research, I'm sorry, um, regulation as mm -hmm. far as going out and doing inspections on farms and making sure people are aware of that. 
And we are also going to be continuing to work with UVM Extension. They're doing an iPhone app to actually see if they can test shutting the valve oh, wow. from your mm -hmm. phone, which would be really efficient. Um, so we just provided a grant to UVM to try and do that. Terrific. So there's, there's a lot mm -hmm. going on this summer, and I think this over this winter we'll move into the next phase. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.